Hello everyone, my name is Chen, and today I will be giving the talk about rethinking searchable, searchable symmetric encryption, which I co-authored with Kenny and Shikha. As you are experts on security and privacy, I don't think I need to introduce you to data breaches. But I thought I would make a boring slide on data breaches, but when I did a Google search two weeks ago, well, I found that all, even that our AI overlord is vulnerable to data breaches. So then the natural question to ask is, why don't we just encrypt the data? Well, we certainly can, but it causes problems somewhere else. Consider the following client server setting where the client has a bunch of documents. The client can encrypt these documents and upload them onto a server. Okay, but then how would the client search over these documents? There have been several primitives proposed to solve this problem. Ideally, we want to create a solution that is as secure as ORAM and as efficient as a plain text system. But we are far from there. Apart from the hardware-based solutions, the landscape of encrypted search roughly looks as follows. There are primitives such as deterministic encryption and order preserving encryption that are very efficient but are vulnerable to attacks. On the other extreme, there are heavy machineries such as FHE and function encryption that are not very efficient but are very secure. Such a symmetric encryption the primitive that we'll be talking about today is a primitive that sits between the two. The goal of searchable symmetric encryption is to build encrypted search schemes that are secure enough and efficient enough for practical users. Before going to the contribution of our talk, let me introduce you to the syntax and the general construction of searchable symmetric encryption schemes. In SSE, we typically consider the single client, single server setting. In this setting, the client possesses a cryptographic key, which it uses to encrypt the document and upload them onto a server. The client can then make queries on the encrypted documents by computing a query token. The server computes a query response with a query token and encrypted documents and returns the query response to the client. As for the thread model, we typically assume that the server is owned by queries. It follows the protocol but it tries to learn as much as possible about the client's queries and the documents. In the next part of the talk, I will show you a toy example of searchable symmetric encryption. But before that, let me describe the concrete search functionality we will consider for the rest of the talk. Here, you imagine that the client has a set of documents. Each document has a list of associated keywords, and the documents have unique document identifiers. We are interested in the searching functionality that returns the, all the documents that contains a particular keyword. To achieve this functionality, at least in the plain text setting, you can build something called an inverter search index. The idea is that we can build an index that's indexed by the keywords as opposed to the documents. That way, we can answer keyword search queries very efficiently. Once we know which document identifiers to look for, we can just retrieve the documents from a second data structure called the, the document array. Now, to go from plain text search to an encrypted one, all we need to do is to build an encrypted version of the inverted search index and the document array. Interestingly, the focus of the searchable symmetric encryption literature is on how to build the inverted search index only. So now let's see a toy example of that. The only cryptographic primitives we will need in this construction is a pseudo-random function f. We need two PRF keys, one for the keyword field and the other for the document identifier field. We encrypt the inverted index as a key value store. In the first entry of the key value store, our goal is to encode and encrypt the information that the first occurrence of Alice is in document one. This is achieved by computing the key as a PRF output of Alice concatenated with one, and the value is a PRF output of Alice concatenated with one, XOR with one. The one in the Alice concatenated with one indicates that this entry is for the first occurrence of Alice. Moving on, we now encode and encrypt the information that the second occurrence of Alice is in document three. We can do this by setting the key as a PRF output of Alice concatenated with two, and the value is a PRF output of Alice concatenated with two, XOR with three. Well, at this point, you may have noticed that the encrypted index is larger than the plain text index is that different occurrences of a keyword have separate entries in the encrypted index. 
This technique is called duplication in the literature and it is applied to make the scheme more secure. Unfortunately, the time to explain how duplication is related to security, but please keep in mind that duplication results in storage overheads as we'll come back to this later. Just to complete the example, the information that the first occurrence of appears in document two and the first occurrence of crypto appears in document three third, and encrypted in the same way as before. Now let's see how can we query the encrypted index. Suppose the client wants to retrieve all documents with keyword Alice. Assume that the client already knows that it should be looking for two documents. It can then simply compute the PRF output of Alice concatenated with one and Alice concatenated with two and send them to the server. The server locks up for the corresponding values in the encrypted index and returns the results to the client. To decrypt these records, the client can simply compute the PRF outputs of Alice concatenated with one and Alice concatenated with two locally and perform exhaust. At this stage, the client knows that it should be retrieving document one and document three. But then here's a problem. How can the client retrieve the actual documents? Well, as we introduced earlier, most of the constructions in the SSE literature are index-only schemes, meaning that the client only gets document identifiers at the end of a keyword query. In our paper, we have considered different options to build system-wide SSE schemes from these index-only schemes. We came up with three options. The first option is to use state-of-the-art index-only SSE schemes on the index and the documents. For the documents, we simply replace the document identifiers in the original schemes with the actual document content and let the schemes do their things. Unfortunately, we found that this leads to an unacceptable storage overhead as these schemes all use duplication. If the area of the yellow dot on the left represents the storage cost of just encrypting the documents naively, then the face with a tear on the right represents the storage cost of encrypting the documents with one of the state-of-the-art index-only SSE schemes. Clearly, this is a severe um, performance um, penalty if we use an index-only SSE scheme for document retrieval. Then consider another option where instead of using an SSE scheme for document retrieval, we rely on other primitives such as um, ORAM and PRR. We found that although these primitives for perform well in terms of storage overhead, they perform poorly in terms of computational cost. Again, if the area of the tiny yellow dot on the left represents the computational cost of naively retrieving the documents, the size of the humongous crying face on the right represents the computational cost of using ORAM or PRR for the job. Well, I should stress here that this is not a criticism against ORAM or PRR. The reason why the overheads are so high is that ORAM and PRR are not designed for fetching a large number of documents per query. Oh, and if I'm wondering how large the full crying face is, well, here it is. On a more serious note, if you're interested in the concrete overheads, you can refer to the following table. There's also a table in our paper if you want to know more details. From the first two options, we are somewhat forced to conclude that we don't know how to retrieve the documents in bulk securely and efficiently. This left, with us, this left us with a not so sound option. We know for a fact that the state of the art SSE schemes generate spurious document identifiers in the index retrieval phase. So how about encrypting the actual documents naively and relying on the spurious document identifiers in the index retrieval phase to retrieve the actual documents? It turns out that this option doesn't work either as schemes constructed this way are vulnerable to the new statistical attacks we have devised in the paper. Our attacks have made significant improvements over previous works. But due to time limitations, I won't expand on this. If you are interested in finding out more, please read our paper. So then, what do our observations mean for the searchable symmetric encryption community? First, we should acknowledge that the index-only schemes do not generalize to document retrieval. Second, we should be aware that we do not know how to solve the document retrieval problem in general yet. Therefore, we need to rethink how we design system-wide secure SSE schemes. 
With that, it comes to the end of my talk. Thanks for listening. All right, uh, we have time for a few questions. Uh, if you have a question, please come to the microphone in the center of the room here. Hi, is it Sen? Can you hear us? Yes, I can. OK, perfect. Uh, thank you for the talk. So my first question is, uh, I understand that like, your work like primarily targets the keyword search problem. Why searchable encryption is used for other applications, like database search, like key value stores, where we don't have the coherence pattern that you are exploiting in your attacks. How you can generalize all these like, claims for the general area of like, searchable encryption. In addition, uh, there is also this like uh, Usenix 2022, sorry, 2020 paper, uh, SEAL, mm -hmm. searchable encryption with adjustable leakages, in which, yes, mm -hmm. like the authors, they used it like only for database search, but like it can be used like here as a mitigation technique. And I don't understand, again, how you can generalize all these claims, even for keyword search, when you didn't consider this like state-of-the-art mitigation techniques. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the question. So first of all, let me, let me clarify uh, our target. So what you were saying is that we only targeted this specific keyword search problem. But actually, for other applications, such as relational databases, well, our attacks still apply. Because in a relational database, you still have this kind of co-occurrence leakage. And to address your second part of your uh, uh, question. No, 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 it's not. So mm -hmm. consider point queries okay. any for like a simple like attribute. No, you cannot have like two tuples that share the same value. So OK. But this kind of databases won't, won't be very practical because in the end, the goal is Why? to at least support. Why? Sorry. Support. Yes. Because, oh, OK. So for me, at least, the end goal is to at least support the full range of SQL queries. So for relational databases, at least. So if we only support a single attribute queries, then it's a very weak um, construction. Do you have any claim, any any experiments or any like uh, uh, mm -hmm. study like in your paper that they can validate that? No, we don't have that in the paper. But I think the goal for everyone in the community is to build generalized schemes. Definitely. Just to give yes. you the yes. just to give you yeah. So maybe I can give you a concrete example of that. So recently, MongoDB has uh, proposed, well, they have a product called Queryable Encryption. Yes, and this is not searchable is encryption. On, this is not yes, searchable it's based encryption. on searchable. But it's based on searchable encryption. All the techniques inside are searchable It has like a different adversarial technique. model. It's like it operates like in the Snapchat adversarial model. Yes, I agree. I agree. I totally agree. But th that's the end goal, everyone. But yeah, the end goal is not to build a single attribute searchable encryption scheme, but multiple attribute searchable encryption scheme. All right. Uh, let's, uh, let, let's let others uh, ask questions, and uh, um, hopefully you guys can uh, connect, uh, connect online and continue the discussion. Yeah, thank you so much for the great talk. Um, I'm curious, you said that there was a really high overhead for like PIR and ORAM. Um, when you're retrieving, mm -hmm. because you have to re retrieve a lot of documents. I'm curious how much overhead there is if you instead just retrieve a small amount of metadata for all the matches and then only retrieve the document that the user is actually going to then read. Did you look at this at yeah. all? Yeah, the, the problem is that we don't know how, well, there's no scheme in the literature that actually retrieves this metadata. We don't have any scheme that supports this. Yeah, yeah, I suppose you proposed the scheme where instead of just retrieving the document identifier, you retrieve the entire mm -hmm. document. And I suppose you could easily imagine adjusting this to just retrieving like the title of the document, for example. And then from that, the user can see which document they actually want to go read, since they're not necessarily going to go read all like, you know, all the matches. Yes, I understand, I, and I understand your point. So this perhaps could work for, so for example, email setting. So for emails, maybe reading a title is enough, but if you have a relational database, then it really makes then this may not make sense because you are really interested in the full role of your data. Yeah, thank right? you so, so much. In that case, there's no metadata. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you.